As we learn and understand more about what's going on inside of our guts, we also start to wonder what can we do to harness this information to improve and optimize our health. If you're new here, I'm Rita Johnson, owner of Divine Mercy Nutritional Care, and I help women to take their health back into their own hands through diet, lifestyle changes, and at-home lab testing. So often we wonder, what is it about our microbiome that can really be leading us down the path of healing, whether it's a hormone abnormality, ultimately getting to the root cause of why we've been unable to lose weight or to have sustained weight loss or a whole host of other issues. So I just want to start by explaining what your gut microbiome is, and hopefully this will help you to understand its broad impact on all areas of your health. Your gut microbiome is basically all the different plants that live inside your digestive tract. They're not really plants, they're microbes, but stick with me for a minute. If we call them plants, then we can kind of think of a garden. And in a garden, we have all the different things that we want growing there, the things we've intentionally planted. And then we also have a whole slew of things that we have not planted that we don't want to harvest, the weeds, the chaff, the things that, um, whether through birds flying by, squirrels coming by to eat the plants that we have planted, whatever it is that has brought them there, the things that are in our plant that we don't want. And some of those plants can actually grow so big that it can kill the plants that we um, are intending to cultivate. So think of things like thistle or ivy or mint, things that are invasive. Um, so when we're looking at our gut microbiome, we're talking about not only the good things, the plants that we intentionally planted there, but also the ones that we didn't plant there. We know that our gut microbiome comes in large part from passing through the birth canal when we're born, and then in large part from being breastfed as a baby. Now, breast milk doesn't actually feed the baby. It's the off products of the microbes that feeds and sustains the baby while being breastfed. So if we were not born vaginally, and if we were not breastfed, Fed, then that can mean a lot for the long term for what we are working with initially with our gut microbiome. That to be said, it doesn't mean that there's nothing that can be done. There is, and we're going to get there. But also we need to have a good look of what is a normal baseline for you. And as we look into that, we can start to get an idea of what are some things that could be causing additional signs and symptoms that you're struggling with. So whether that is due to having too much of something that is opportunistic or not enough good quality stuff in your gut. So there's tests like the GI stool map and um, several others out there now that are allowing for us through sending a very small amount of stool sample through the mail to get a really good look at what's going on with your gut microbiome. And they help us to really kind of get a better look at, do we have some intestinal permeability? In other words, is food leaking out of our digestive tract and causing inflammation or contributing to inflammation? The GI stool map also lets us get a good look at are there pathogens or things that are living in your gut that we need to take steps to eradicate. This can be parasites. This can be um, microbes that just tend to be very opportunistic, whether they got there from vegetables that weren't washed thoroughly or whatever it was, however we were exposed to something. Um, these are even things that can be passed from one person to the next through kissing, through using a drinking cup. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways that we can get on ideal <laughs> There's a lot of ways we can get different microbes into our digestive tract that we don't want there. They're not helpful in supporting our overall health. We also know that there's certain markers in our gut microbiome that can show it's going to be more difficult for us to lose weight. Um, one of those markers can actually tell us if we're able to reach into those fat stores and burn them or not. When certain markers are low, we know that it's going to be a lot harder to do that. An additional marker that I find really fascinating is if we have an elevated um, enzyme, then we can actually have an issue happening where as we're digesting and eradicating our hormones, our sex hormones, if um, this certain enzyme is really high, then it can prevent those hormones from passing out of our digestive tract. So 
I'm going to talk through this one um, in a great amount of depth just to show you the magnitude of what we can see with the GI stool map. So there's an enzyme called beta-glucuronidase. And beta-glucuronidase, when it's elevated, takes the um, estrogen or progesterone that has to be mixed with bile and then passed through the digestive tract to be turned off, if you will, and then um, passed out through the bowels. If beta-glucuronidase is high, as that estrogen that has been turned off is being passed through the digestive tract, beta-glucuronidase can turn it back on, which means that it can contribute to estrogen dominance. So this is why even though we may take progesterone to help support our body and rebalance the estrogen and progesterone, if we're not taking it a step further and diving into addressing that high level of beta-glucuronidase, we're going to continue to have elevated estrogen. And this is especially a problem if you have endometriosis or if you're struggling with infertility because you have too much estrogen in your system. But even if you're not trying to conceive, it's still critically important to be sure that we're regulating our estrogen levels. Estrogen is a hormone that causes things to grow, and that can be good things, and that can be less than good things like cancerous cells. So it's always a good idea to get that under control and to support your body through that. Now with the GI stool map, you may have to retake it after three to six months. This really depends upon what we see on that first stool map. Oftentimes when we see markers that are high and that we need to go on an eradication journey to be sure that we eliminate that or bring values back into range, we'll let you know as we're going through the lab results if that's something that we would need to retest in three to six months or not. Also, I highly recommend doing the GI stool map alongside of the MRT testing. The reason for this is that sometimes the GI stool map can show us the whole story of what's going on and what has been causing gut inflammation. However, if food sensitivities are also present at the same time and we continue to have inflammation as a result of eating those foods, then we won't truly be able to heal the gut until we also eliminate the food sensitivities that are causing additional sources of inflammation. For more on the MRT test, please check out my video on MRT testing. Thank you so much for your time today. Please like, share, subscribe for more content from me. And if you're wondering if it's time to break up with your doctor, I have an ebook I'd love to share with you. And it really walks you through what to look for if you decide to take the plunge and go in a different direction. Thank you.